Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ten Minutes Astrology. It is a podcast to offer you an easy way to learn astrology from the beginning. Ten Minutes Astrology. I'm at the beginner. You don't need to know anything about astrology. I'm Dr. Chang. I'm professional astrologer and co-founder of Academy of Astrology. I am Alejo Lopez. I'm also a professional astrologer, a tutor at the Faculty of Astrological Studies and a psychologist. Well, you know, every time we talk, we choose a topic in the basic astrology talk and uh, leading the discussion, and uh, sometimes we give a little bit of example. But before we start, I think Alejo have some interesting event to announce, right? Yes, of course. I want to invite everyone. We're going to be doing a talk, a, a, an Instagram live talk. Mm -hmm. on Jupiter and Neptune, you know, a lot wow. of people are talking about it. And mm -hmm. we're going to try to approach it from a new um, perspective. Okay. To be honest, a non-traditional approach to the Jupiter and Neptune. This mm -hmm. is going to be on the 11th of April at mm -hmm. 5 p.m. on my Instagram, which is Liminal Cosmos. Cool, cool. And then on the 13th, we have a workshop with Fernanda Paiva. And mm -hmm. the idea is to help uh, people engage with Jupiter and Neptune in a more experiential way. So through perhaps meditations and exercises and not so much in a rational way, trying to understand what it means, but trying to experience it and <laughs> I perhaps think set your intentions. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. I think it's very interesting. So it's me. I think it's very interesting because the, the Neptune quality, we haven't talked about Neptune yet, but if you know a little bit of, about astrology, Neptune is very intangible. So... Mm. Like for me, like I'm very air sign. I, if I try to grab it with the rational mind, usually, you know, there is a limit. But that, that with that kind of a, you know, different way, different approach would be very, very interesting. So on the 11th, there is a talk on Instagram. And on the 13th, there is a workshop with uh, uh, Alejo and uh, Fernanda. So please remember, put down on your diary and uh, we will post the link underneath of this talk. So if you're interested, you can contact Alejo and Fernanda for this uh, talk and the workshop. Great, well, so... Um, from this week, we are going to talk about the three planets, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Talk about their meaning in astrology and learn how to interpret these three planets and their sign, how to, how, to, how, to, how, to, how to talk about it, how astrologers see the Mercury in different sign. What does that mean? Um, because I think uh, some astrologer refer to these three planets as a personal planet because they describe our life, our personal life, also some people say personality. And usually these three planets relate to those areas of life very close to our personal life. Yes. Like uh, um, each planet have this kind of meaning, like a, what we talk about sun. It's not sun, it's not everything. Sun is about what we want and how we become successful. We talk about the moon. Moon is not everything. Moon is what we need or refer to our relationship with, uh, say, caretaker. Well, this role in the traditional society maybe is mother's mm -hmm. role. Yeah, the, how to nurture, how to nurture. Exactly. So today we will start from Mercury. This is a small, tiny planet. I heard about some people say it's a rock. Well, it's Mercury. <laughs> and this planet is right next to the sun and always stay very close to the sun. If you read the chart, Mercury is usually either way, 28 degree either way from the sun. So either your sun in the, uh, either in the same sign as your sun or the one before or the one after, depending on the situation. So it's very close to the sun. So it's one thing is we can learn from this astronomy thing is Mercury usually describes things right next to us, very close to us. So, Alejo, what else does Mercury in our chat talk about? Well, um, I usually, you know, I like to start with a story. Oh, yes, we like it. <laughs> all trying to understand what they mean. And one of the stories of, of Mer Mercury or Hermes, you know, Hermes mm -hmm. was the brother of Apollo. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things in my represent is a relationship to brothers and siblings, you know, because mm -hmm. he like it was one of the fundamental bonds in the story of Hermes. Basically, when he was born, he he left his uh, bed, his baby bed, and he stole the cattle from Apollo. 
And he was very, very clever. He put his sandals on the other way mm -hmm. and he made the cattle walk backwards. <laughs> so that when people would find the foot trails, they would get, be confused about where to go. And he hid the cattle in a, in a cave. And then he went back to his bed. But Apollo, he's the god of, you know, he sees everything. So uh, he, he, he knew what happened. So he went to Hermes and he told him, like, give me my cattle back. And Hermes was like, no, I didn't steal anything. I didn't steal anything. So Apollo took Hermes all the way to Zeus, uh, which is the god of the gods. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, Zeus, come on. Uh, Hermes uh, took, uh, Hermes is the son of Zeus also. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was like, your son took, the, took, took my cattle. And Hermes was still saying no and no and no and no. And so he was like very, very, like, you know, he had a poker face, basically saying no, no, no. And in the end, he confessed and he gave the kettle back to Apollo. And Apollo discovered that Hermes had done with the turtle, with the turtle, with the, um, how do you call it, the hard part of the turtle? Shell. I don't know. Shell, yes. <laughs> uh, he had turned it into a lyre. Uh, so he gave this instrument, this musical instrument to Apollo. And Apollo was happy and they, they made friends, right? Mm. So I think from this story, we get a lot of ideas about who Hermes, uh, Hermes may represent in the chart, Mercury might represent in the chart. Mm -hmm. First of all, there's this idea of being clever, being smart, and this idea of knowing what to say and knowing what not to say. Hermes was going to be chosen as the, the god, you know, the, the messenger god. So uh, it's going to be reflecting a lot about how we communicate things. And also there's this idea of inter-exchange, you know, he exchanged the, the cattle for the lyre and all of these things. Uh, so there's this idea of inter-exchanging things and mm -hmm. you can you can apply the meaning of inter-exchange not only to language and to ideas but also to commerce like i give you something and you give me something mm. so it's this ability to negotiate uh, like ability, trading <laughs> like trading exactly yeah. yes um so and it's going to be related to all of this all of this this kind of things how you think how you how you talk how you trade how you negotiate how you if you're clever or not uh, not, not if you're clever or not, but kind of how, how your your tricky mind, you know, may work. Where you where you may be able to lie, or how you may be able to lie, because Hermes is a liar, mm. um, and all, all of those kind of things. Yeah, I think it is very interesting because when you mention about liar, okay. Uh, to be honest, everything in astrology, every simple, every planet. There would be like a maybe like a positive image or negative image. I mean, I mean, every yeah. planet have that side. So uh, yes, we don't deny it, but uh, maybe you can use it in the best way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to exactly. be honest, yes, yes. yes. I, I I didn't say lie is a uh, good or lie is is. I don't want to say lie is good, but well, sometime there's a, some circumstance some situation you have to not tell the truth yeah i agree i, I remember uh, at my job my previous job uh, once i had to lie to back up a friend you know otherwise he was going to get fired for a mistake uh-huh yeah so so, it, so 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 and also i think traditional astrology in traditional astrology especially in Harari, sometime mercury represents the sea so if I say, oh, I forget mm, something yeah. or I lost something, if Mercury represents sign uh, around that, that things you lost, I mean, maybe someone else steal it. So it's, but does this doesn't mean you, if you have a strong Mercury in your chart, then you are a liar or thief. No, this is not this way. Okay. No, of course. Yeah. I think it means that you have an ability for words. Yeah. An yeah. ability to negotiate. Exactly. So the key word of Mercury, communication, negotiate, trading, thinking, my speaking, writing, learning, and the sibling and the neighbor and the how we connect to each other. So I think let's do a little bit of exercise, shall we? Because I think yeah, this let's... help people understand how they how could they read the Mercury in their chart. I think let's start from the things we are very familiar with for because for the last couple of months we keep talking about element. And now people understand if you want to read some a planet in the sky, you can go with uh, this planet in this sign, what element is this sign? Or what modality is this sign? And right. make an interpretation. This is how we learn. This is how we work out. It's not just like a, a 
what what some people say astrology is a statistic result. I said no sense. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh my God, I'm going to finish my time. Yep. So okay. So Alejo, how about you start? You choose one element. Okay, I'm going to choose um, I, fire. Okay, yeah, fire. Okay. So Mercury in fire. So fire is about it's an it's an active it's an active element. It's about passion and vision and trust and confidence, right? Mm -hmm. So Mercury in fire is somebody probably who speaks loudly, speaks up. You know, they speak their mind. They trust in what they what they what they say, what they believe, and they will they will speak openly, probably courageously. They will trust mm. in what they're saying. They might want yeah. to inspire others with what they say. Also, the train of thoughts might be very fast, very sparkly, very clever, very smart, very visionary. Mm -hmm. And you could also say this to the relationship with their siblings, perhaps. Yeah. And with a with a wider early environment, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, so it could be like uh, maybe there's a sense of competition or drive mm -hmm. or uh, kind of this this energy that's outgoing, you know, in this yeah. kind of relationships. Yes, um, I think. Oh. Let me, the word you, you, you when you describe that kind of uh, competition in a verbal way, somehow I, I try to find a word in an English word. What usually we see on the on TV or or movie, a trash talk before the real engage of the fight or before real engage of the competition. The mm -hmm. two team will have a trash talk, you know, like, a, yes. oh, you're a loser, you're not good. That is a very fiery thing. That yes, is a very, exactly. yes. very, very uh, uh, fire element mercury thing. Okay, I will choose the water side because it's most intangible. And I have that planet. I have my ah, mercury nice. in water okay. side. So, okay, the first thing is like uh, they... The the what they focus on, what the uh, the mind of the uh, water sign Mercury would be more a focus on feeling mm -hmm. how we feel. And we we like to tell people how we feel, but it's not like a, hey Alejo, let me tell you how I feel today. No, <laughs> because um, a water sign are usually so called negative sign or inside, so we are more reflective or reaction, which means we are waiting for other people to ask say. How do you feel, Rod? And I was like, oh no, I can't believe this. <laughs> so it's like, I'm not going to tell you, but until you ask me, I will definitely tell you how I feel. This is the water mercury, but also water side is also the nurturing side or like a good mm. moisture. So with a sibling or with a neighbor, we like a caretaking, we like a look after them. Right. Then that's kind of a mercury in water side we have the other two element earth i'm sorry sorry can i can i add something i think also yeah mercury in water maybe yeah. somebody who speaks with images you know in a more poetic way in a more intuitive way yes so exactly definite the way they speak they speak it's more like open it's more like uh, through feelings and images and emotions yes Yes, I like the one sentence I like most is a, a picture more than a thousand words. Right, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we have other two uh, two element, air element and uh, the earth element. I think you can you can try to do a little bit of exercise like a, if you have earth element Mercury like a Virgo, like in Capricorn, like in Taurus. So how you say the word and what's your mind what's you you focus your mind on what or you have the mercury in the air side how you express yourself by the language this is a very very good exercise well i think that our time is a very short so you know we should end here thank you for listening to this astrology and this week we learned a little bit about the mercury uh, we really hope you guys enjoy this episode please like and subscribe here and if you have any question the best way is join our facebook group 10 minutes astrology group i would like to invite you to come to our group and write something about your mercury sign so yeah. we can have a we can have a give you some feedback you know this it would be the best way to learn to help each other and if you have other question or feedback, you can also send message to the um, uh, at AOA UK on Telegram or email to us aoa.inquiry at gmail.com. Or you can find me on Instagram at AOA UK ROD. 
Also, you can find the Alejo at Liminal Cosmos. Liminal Cosmos, and don't forget on the 11th April, Alejo have a talk through the Instagram. And on yes. the 13th, there is a workshop. Okay. And next time, Alejo, what are we going to talk? <laughs> Next time we're gonna to go to talk about Venus, another planet, an interior planet. Yes, Ooh, a personal cool. planet. So, okay. See you next week. Stay tuned. Bye. Bye bye.